The story revolves around a 28-year-old girl named Naho who manages to send letters which contain key events in her past back in time to her past self as a teenager. It's Naho's teenage self to undo and change the dark and forsaken future that is lined up in her wakes. As much as I hate reviewing or even watching anime with source material, I just thought Orange was one of many anime adaptations really worth giving recognition. The main reason I don't like reviewing anime with source material is because I don't want to get super critical to the point where I have to go in depth of how much the manga, light novel, or visual novel in some cases don't truly captivate their true original counterpart. That's why for whatever chance if I go viral and start reviewing an anime with source material, I don't want to be caught up in a situation where oh you didn't talk about the manga and shit like that. Because I personally do not read manga, light novels, or visual novels, so I don't want to be caught up in that situation where, where I have to compare the two. That is why bringing in characters, directors, story illustrators, and blah 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 to critique one part of an adaptation seems unfair. So let's please just stick to the anime adaptation and who's responsible for it. You know, it took me a while to realize, sitting here for over 30 minutes trying to come up with a script to criticize and be little of what's left of Orange. I mean, it's not easy. I was gonna drop some other retarded, overhyped, and critically successful anime adaptation and just bury Orange Alive. But you know what? I don't want to be that kind of parent who compares their kids to other kids. I'm gonna appreciate what I have and pull out bits and parts that I felt happy about the series. Unless it's bearably noticeable. To be true though, if I wasn't an avid anime watcher, I definitely wouldn't mind jumping into the orange ship and setting sail to another show much similar to these and starting my adventure. My adventures would start off on the islands of Erased or the happy lands of Anohana or the glossy caves of Blue Spring Ride. You know at this point I'm just reading this shit off myanimelist.com. Well, you guys get the gist. Okay, to start off the review, I'll be very blunt and straightforward. You won't be getting anything out of the ordinary special regarding characters, love interests, and cliches from the Orange series. The elements of romance, drama, slice of life, shoujo genre, they have been doing the same gag over and over again and that is what you see in Orange as well. I mean, I'm not saying it's already automatically bad. What I'm trying to say is why I fix something that isn't broken, right? This is definitely something I won't recommend to anyone I'm trying to introduce anime to, but it sure is a flagship series that can come across specific individuals who've never seen anime and appreciate more of it and start looking for it more in its specific category. And when I mean specific individuals, I mean a very small micro minority of it. Its pacing is slow yet satisfyingly rewarding, subtle and warm, innocent and nostalgic, in a way I guess. Not many avid anime fans are fond of the light storytelling of what Orange is trying to achieve. I too am very guilty in feeling the same feeling I just described. I was honestly getting bored midway through the series. It was horrendously slow in pacing and didn't have much impact to its crucial events. Very early on in the series, you'll maybe feel like wanting to take a giant razor blade over your head needing to gun yourself down. It took me about 4 tries to actually start getting into horns just because I couldn't find a hook that could keep me watching. But me watching and being around much more successful anime have driven me to forget other series that don't take the same formula in storytelling. So I thought to myself, maybe I'm watching this incorrectly. So realizing this, I thought that I should change my tone of attitude towards later in the series. And that's where I was too late. The series took over its head. Midway through the series, the story progression took off like a rocket zero to 100 real quick. This sudden jump in progression made me thought if this was intentional or inevitable for an adaptation that's had source material running for 6 volumes. The show also has some questionable feelings multiple people might encounter about the whole subject of why this 28 year old girl is going through all the trouble. Not to spoil anything significant but many of you may wonder what is the moral value of any of this based on. Why does Nao have to do this? Why does Nao have to do that? Is this just all to seal off an unfortunate event that happened in the past? How about the 28 year old Nao and her friends? How do they feel about the whole situation not knowing the true consequences and circumstances? is now doing all this for pity just because she couldn't stop an event almost 10 years ago? Humanely, what she's trying to achieve doesn't seem very sensible and might come across very impulsive especially if you have more than what you did back in high school. Little bits of more things will start to slowly unravel to make more sense but the question you might be feeling will start to even escalate higher which will lead to uncertainty and some sort of confusion which you might not be very familiar with. This also doesn't make things better because all the conclusions are jumped up to a mere 5th grader science project. This is one of the complaints I had towards the end of the series. Especially if you had someone in charge that took part in one of the best anime releases in recent memory. This is not excusable because Orange was directed by whom was also in a big part of a past project most notable for its plot surrounding time travel. But then again like I said before this explanation 
explanation was probably adapted from Orange's original source material, meaning the responsibility might not just go right towards Orange's directing staff, concluding my point why I fucking hate reviewing anime with source material. But in all seriousness, even though the show might succumb in cliches and tacky love triangles, it did accomplish something towards the end of the series that not a lot of animes cover, considering it's also a very sensible topic, especially towards the Japanese community. In the end, it didn't really matter to me how all the lovey-dovey bullcrap, bad scientific explanation, etc. played out. It had one main point and it came across to me very apparent but not very convincing at first. Rolling into orange, you'll see as if one of the main characters, Kakeru Naru says partake in the series is meaningless and a waste of time even though the story practically evolves around him. However, as the series continues to roll out and deepens the emotional relationship it embedded into the viewers, some if not many viewers will realize how important and emotional the story around Kakeru is. It made me as a viewer realize how life and the real world works in a sense unlike traditional romance and slice of life series. The last time I felt this way was from one of Makoto Shinkai's infamous work 5 centimeters per second, which might come across little biased because it's one of my favorite films of all time. It was critically acclaimed but the mass majority of normies who can only appreciate a Cinderella love story couldn't capitalize on the true meaning of that film. So in conclusion, going into Orange I was expecting a simple romance drama type anime series, however that wasn't the case. I got something more deeper than not a lot of anime plots cover nowadays. In the end, Orange might not be for everyone. Some people might enjoy Orange for what it was, some people might not. But the true MVPs are the ones whom took into account of what Orange truly meant. So did Orange suck? No, not at all. Suicide is a very complicated topic to work under. Not a lot of people understand it, but they wish they could and help. And honestly, I'm one of those people. It's not as easy as tapping somebody's shoulder and saying there's always someone looking after you or who cares about you. Especially coming from someone who has never experienced these kinds of tragedies. Even though Orange might be an anime or cartoon or whatever you want to call it, it sure did open my eyes wider to know how these tragedies are serious than just telling a suicidal person and tapping their shoulder saying there's always someone who cares about you. I'm not a man of words and have not much things to say around these types of people who are experiencing these kinds of urges, but I will have to say that there's always someone experiencing your pain. The same sorrow of not wanting to move on, feeling that you can't make a difference, but I truly believe that's not the case. You always can make a difference. Please just remember there's always someone willing to help you, no matter who it is.